an ounce. World War III and the Bear. Cold War tale of mistaken identity. I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. It was October 1962, and the world was on edge. The U.S. military was on high alert. Everyone thought nuclear annihilation could happen at any moment. Schools were teaching children how to duck and cover under their desks in the event of an atomic blast. People were digging holes and pouring concrete in their backyards, not to build pools, but instead to build personal fallout shelters and then quickly filling them with survival supplies. It was the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis. U.S. President John F. Kennedy and Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev were at odds over the placement of nuclear missiles in Cuba, just a few miles off the coast of Florida. There is, in Wisconsin, an Air National Guard base, Volk Field, with a 9,000-foot-long runway. What does that have to do with the Cuban Missile Crisis? Just a small kind of out-of-the-way place. The airfield did not even have a control tower to manage its own runways and the movement of aircraft. That was controlled from a central location in Duluth, Minnesota, several miles away. However, at the time, a detachment of nuclear-armed jets, F-106 interceptors, had been moved to the airfield to be a little more out of sight. Their mission was to destroy incoming Soviet bombers in the event of war. It was October 25th, 1962, and the base was at alert level DEFCON 3, meaning this was no exercise or test. Everyone was to be ready, as war was imminent. Aircraft and personnel were poised to jump into full action in 15 minutes or less. It was close to midnight when it happened. A shadowy, dark figure was observed just outside the fence by base security personnel in Duluth. The figure attempted to quietly climb over the fence. The guard opened fire. The security intrusion alarm was immediately activated, and the network of bases under the control of the Duluth site were alerted, including the Air National Guard base at Volk Field. But at Volk Field, instead of the intrusion alarm warning, the klaxon announcing that World War III had started was set off. The pilots ran to their readied aircraft, ignited the engines, and began to taxi towards the runway, take to the skies. But when someone in a pickup truck darted quickly in front of them, blocking the path to the runway, the aircraft stopped. So there they were. Several supersonic F-106 Delta Dart United States Air Force fighter interceptors armed with their Genie nuclear rockets ready to take off and then fly at speeds of over Mach 2, except for some nut in a pickup truck pulling up and parking on the taxiway, then jumping out of the truck and running around waving his arms. Was someone trying to call off World War III? Was he a Soviet agent trying to slow them down? He was lucky. The lead aircraft didn't open up on him with the 106's 20 millimeter cannon. However, very quickly after the alarm rang out of the Soviet attack, the dark and shadowy intruder backed off the fence at Duluth and retreated on four legs. Oops, not the enemy. Instead, it was a bear looking for a shortcut to the other side of the base. Phone calls were immediately made to stop the madness before it got too far. And at least at Volk Field, that call was answered. And I'm guessing, but it might have felt a little like this. Oof, the Volk Field, kind of busy right now. Can it wait? It's a bear. Holy buckets. Meaning a Russian bear bomber? Oh, for heck's sake. Just a big black furry bear, don't you know? Looking for something to eat, and some cake eating scony panicked and took a couple of shots at him. Abort takeoff before you get us all killed. Yeah, could be worse, but you betcha, we'll shut her down, don't you know? That crazy guy in the pickup, without getting shot at, stopped the aircraft from taking off and nuking the Soviets. The only thing that got shot at was a trespassing bear, and from all reports, even it got away safe, and everyone woke up in the morning. 
So here's the ounce. Imagine you are anticipating that a bright flash of oblivion could happen at any moment. And your job is to watch the perimeter for a possible, even probable, surprise attack. You see something coming over the fence. Who is it? It's obviously an attacker, right? At least in that situation, that's the only thing it could be. And it's obvious no one would be coming over that fence with good intentions. But instead of what you knew you saw, it was something completely normal. Well, at least in Minnesota, it was a bear looking for anything it can eat, a bear for hibernation. But that was not what you were looking for. Nothing that is even being considered at the time. If it's a shadowy figure climbing over the fence, it's a saboteur. You're at DEFCON 3. Shots have been fired. And this is not a drill. This is a poignant example how the role you see yourself in and the things you're looking for influence what you see. Like this. If you're a framing hammer, your job is to pound nails. And everything is a nail, even if it's a screw or a cotter pin or a straight piece of wire. Your job is to smack it. That's what you do. If you're a nail, everything is a hammer, even when it isn't. It could be a wrench or a big screwdriver or even a rock. Everything is a hammer. When you are you, everything you see is what it is. Until and unless you can be lifted up or get a new perspective and see something more. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.